So, I think we have uh, covered quite a bit here in the context of how to come up with uh, with ideas, uh, what type of megatrends are there and driving, what kind of, uh, how to envision uh, the, the bigger opportunities within whatever the initial idea or whatever the initial problem that you identify is that, okay, if we can drive that to that, these kinds of frameworks and models, how would that idea look? How would the vision look like in a bigger format? if we drive it through that. And perhaps through that process, and most likely through that process, you are more able to see ideas that have low, uh, low probability or where the idea's value is much less than uh, another idea that you have, or your idea changes and expands when you see a big opportunity while you still see the same market and customer base. Um, nevertheless, this, these are tools that you don't have to build any kind of MVP to take to the market because there's a lot of information and data available as long as you have a framework and concept that you can drive those through to at least prioritize them in that order to select the first one where you then actually start to deliver it into the markets in the minimal format, it doesn't mean you have to build an entire platform first. You can start with an MVP that just tries to see whether there actually is real platform enabled potential to deliver this value to that customer where it comes from them and it's delivered by them. Or if there's a demand, if this would be provided this and you create an MVP that um, simulates that kind of delivery, even if it's delivered manually. Uh, on the other side. <clears throat> so first we'll start with the, the idea that the, the, the concept that the value of idea is zero. The, the, the fact is that ideas are almost, when you get to work uh, with a lot of them, when you have worked for a long time, value of ideas is zero. In some cases for me, like personally, they are almost like mental waste in the sense that uh, every idea that takes capacity of, of my mind when I need to be focused on delivering some value or working on existing things is actually a distraction. And sometimes ideas stick so hard that it's really hard to ignore them and you feel this obligation that I need to do something for this. What I try to do personally because if already committed on working something else it's better to just openly publish that idea to someone else and try someone else to, to see that potential and, and maybe perhaps they will create that idea. And then I don't have to worry about, I don't have to feel responsible of having that idea. But this is just a perspective because I want to say this because people get so overly obsessed and they fall in love with the idea. And it's not about the idea. It's about proving that the idea has value, that it's actually a potential innovation that it can actually be something significant and it can actually change something. And that needs resources, that needs commitment, that needs execution. And that's why uh, getting away from the idea a bit further, prioritize things and get to the validation uh, phase is a key. But going there with resources where you can actually effectively uh, validate the idea, pivot the idea, uh, improve the idea so that you are not stuck again with coming up with the next idea and, and, and no team to execute behind that. So how does a more systematic approach then if we look, now we have looked at the landscape and some of the mega trends and opportunities for how to look at the innovation uh, in broader context, but then let's look at uh, the, the one great concept about systematic approach of thinking um, ideas themselves. This is from uh, Tony Ulwick uh, from Strategy, the main concept. So I, I'll just quickly cover the concepts and we have links where you can go and consume all of the different free and, and paid products of his if you, if you like. But the reason I'm highlighting him here is, is that he's one of the 
the best uh, hidden gems that I have found online after after having decades of myself worked uh, coming up with uh, these models and seeing this in, in, in once understanding his concept, uh, these wrong ways of creating innovations that happen all the time. And also that this is not commonly uh, referred in the context of uh, startup world. Uh, a lot of the startup world activities actually start from a uh, uh, expectation that there is an idea in a team and not so much about how do you come up with good ideas? How do you actually do the ideation part before you commit to an idea? And this is why the, the strategies and models that uh, Tony has worked more than 20 years himself iterating uh, this approach is, is such uh, an inspiring uh, topic. So I think we can all agree that not all I yeah, all ideas are equal, worth building or even testing. So not every idea should be immediately build a team and go to the lean startup mode to start validating them. Because there are many ideas and so it's better to understand first where did the idea came from, how did the idea emerge, what vetting process has the idea gone through before choosing which one of the ideas actually is a priority to execute. And I also want to expand this a little bit more. So it's not about do we build a table company or do we build a camera company? I'm not talking about ideas in that level. I'm also talking about ideas. Do we deliver this product as our own product? Do we de deliver it as a subscription model? Do we, de we deliver it as a platform play? Do we deliver it as, as what way? Even if it would be the same solution on, 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 on the way because the innovation is a mix of many elements. It's not just about the actual value, it's also all the mechanics of how that value is delivered and all the technologies that are used and selected to deliver that. So this is why the ideas um, is important to understand in, in more specific ways. So <clears throat> why ideas are worth nothing is usually exactly because everything begins with an idea. So it's about coming up with multiple ideas and then start trying to prioritize those. Brainstorming a lot of ideas, volume of ideas, and then going immediately into lean startup mode to test those ideas. So one way we can think why is there so many failures in early startups is that they go through and quickly to the uh, market validation mode and don't spend enough time or don't know enough uh, about the strategies and opportunities at the ideation phase to choose um, uh, more potential ideas. So basically this means that there's a random, a lot of waste process. And anything that has random, a lot of waste uh, uh, approach is not a good approach. If there is already known tested, validated, statistical, factual things to do it better, then that is a better choice. So typical approach in ideation is that a lot of ideas, let's, take, let's look at the markets where these ideas would fit to. Let's think of the markets that this idea applies to. Then let's look at what kind of needs there could be that we could make our ideas match with. So let's try to find the markets, let's try to find the needs within the markets with our idea. I think this sounds familiar for those who do uh, product market fit in that way, where they start with the product and find market fit. So that's a typical way of thinking of ideas. And then comes the strategy or business model of how do we capture value if we find the market for this idea and if we identify the needs within the markets that fit this idea, then we can come up with a business model where we can apply this. So that model is of course the dominating model and that model is of course free for anyone to use and repeat as many times they want in their lifetime and see how that works. Uh, but you may want to consider another approach 
to test at least every once in a while or test one first test, test another one then, uh, what could be the alternative. So in this model, the growth is left to chance. So it's about volume of ideas, hope to find markets, hope it meets needs, hope to find strategy, and hope itself is not a strategy. It should not be a pros. Business should not be about hoping. So it, it should have those elements where we first consider the markets. It should have those elements where we look at the needs first and we should look at that it's strategically sound uh, to deliver. So we have talked about these uh, things previously in the context of uh, identifying the attractive market, how to validate that. We have discussed in this earlier in the context of uh, customer needs. Uh, this, these same elements exist in the ecosystem canvas, in the platform canvas. These exist in the, in the looking at the vision and mission phase. So when it comes to ideas, we should really start from these uh, elements. So the right approach, start with the markets, make sure there is a big enough market or there is a growing market or there is a changing market with unknown potential. It's going to be small or big that are driving by, by those mega trends. Then drive in the existing needs. So you don't need to come up with new needs. Their market already exists. Tons and tons of needs that are serviced by existing products or services. <clears throat> but that there is unmet needs. And again, this music, the music is a great example. When the iTunes store was on a tipping point and it was growing, of course, it was just when that was happening, it was hard to see that, of course, there's not unmet needs within there because it was not a perfect experience. And Spotify today is not a perfect experience. Someone's going to figure out an unmet need within that context where people are suffering with some pain points that the Spotify has. Whether that will be big enough need, whether that can be delivered by new technology or enabled by new uh, mega trends where people want to have the music differently, uh, will be seen. But this approach and these strategies of finding and seeking is, is, the, is the approach. Then looking also the strategy. So in case here we have the markets, we have the customer needs. So now we are talking about the mission. It's like what do we want to deliver and to whom? What value to whom? So market is the who and what value is the, the, the needs. So value is delivered to remove the pain. So what needs they have? Uh, so that's the mission. So once you figure out the mission, you already have covering parts of this, but you may want to still look uh, also more broadly to make sure you land in the right balanced combination. Strategy is then, do you want to do uh, ecosystemic strategy? Do you want to do a platform strategy? Do you want to do a traditional linear business uh, model approach? Do you want to do um, 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 Airbnb for X? Do you want to do a, a strategy that focus on uh, just the high-end customers, just the highest paying customers, and then you come down from there, like Tesla did with the electric cars? I mean, these are all then components, and is that doable? So you validate these, and these are still theoretical validations, but these are better than starting with ideas and looking for the market. So now, if you validate that, yes, there's a big market that has this needs opportunity, and there is a sound strategy that we are capable of by choosing these tools initially, and these existing solutions that nobody has yet combined this way, we could actually enter that market with this approach and we could create, come up with an MVP model that we could start here to validate whether we are appealing in the eyes of customers. 
And now you start to think of ideas and now you start to think these ideas as uh, more concrete market entry ideas. So elim uh, elim uh, eliminating chains or chance. So market size, uh, just how looking at market, how it is today, is a wrong approach. There's also another approach to really consider uh, what the market could be. When we have to look at the market in a way where markets are changing, like the fintech market, a lot of the finance products are going to be embedded into other product experiences, like uh, getting a credit at the time when you are in the e-commerce store instead of going to credit at the bank at the time. Or, uh, or same for travel insurance, buying the insurance at the time when you buy your tickets instead of having to go an insurance company, uh, figuring out an insurance that covers you for all kinds of different situations. So you can define a market more of what is the price, uh, what are the products and what are the buyers. And you can find new market opportunities and new markets in a way where you look at not from the eyes of what is the music industry, but maybe you look at in the, in the, uh, more of what is the music experience industry where uh, buying individual songs or music in one channel is one and then experiencing it live is another one and can you combine and create a market out of that. So basically if you look at the customer's experience and you can look at all the experiences they have in the context of consuming music, for example in this case is, is the, this joke to be done. So what is the joke that they're trying to be trying to get done? So someone is trying to listen to music, okay, that's a job to be done. Then what do, steps do they need to take? Uh, what is the process to do that? And what are the pain points that the current products and services have? So now we are looking really how to come up with a mission. So what is the market, in our opinion, the customers or the market, so to who? Cool? are we servicing and the value, what we're we servicing, what is the job that we are helping them to do better? Is it faster, cheaper, better? Is it more reliable? These are the different factors. So the, 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 the statistical view that uh, uh, into this uh, that is factual in the regards of that those who create try to come up with new products and ideas, 95% have not defined what the customer need is. And there's two different dimensions. They don't know what the need should be. So what does that need actually mean? How do you describe the need? And then actually seek to find what those needs are. And then to really focus on that need to understand that it's a job that the customer is trying to do. It has a beginning and it has an end and there's a process in between and there's things that they need to do to get it done. What is that and how it can be made better? So of course Uber case here is a great example. The taxi experience before Uber, the taxi experience after Uber. The job to be done was I need to get from A to B. I don't want to use public transportation. How is that job that I need to get done? And how it's done today? There's a beginning, there's an end, there's all the steps in, the be in between. How to make that better? The customer need was there before Uber. The customer need is there now when there is Uber. The customer need is there with Uber and someone's going to make that better in the future. So then looking at these needs and then prioritizing the needs first and prioritizing the solutions of how to make it better are how to come up with much better ideas. How to make it quicker, how to make it more efficient, how to make it more uh, successful so that there's, you know, 
um, how to make for it successfully, for example, that how Google search results would always give me right better answers faster right away instead of I well that didn't really work. I need to come up with the better search word. So that's why Google makes these suggestions when you type is that how they have improved and trying to make that you get more successful outcomes. They try to influence your question and guide you asking, a, a, a giving you ideas how to ask a better question than just putting a generic search word there. Other dimensions, speed, ability, output, uh, and, and so forth. And then mapping these needs in a canvas again. And, and this is the, the, the canvas of of, uh, of, uh, of all this uh, stuff. So we have links to this. He explains this whole framework in much more detail. You have access to these canvases in his videos, in his website. Uh, and if you're you know, a, a bigger company already and you have never even heard of this, I, I suggest to, to just buy his services and products and so forth for startups and for earlier companies or innovation support organizations, it's, it's most important that these key concepts are even known and understood. And then if you get uh, uh, good traction, then maybe you want to consume and go it's even, even deeper into this. Because combining these elements, these frameworks, these mega trends, and these uh, very straightforward, very logical approaches of ideation, I can guarantee you that you come up with having better ideas to go to the MVP stage and to lean startup cycle. That is the dominant way of, of failing startups, fail fast, uh, fail often. How about if you start with better, more uh, vetted ideas and then go to lean startup mode, which is perfect for that execution. And we'll focus on that in the next module, how to do that effectively. But to get more out of that, it's important that you go in with higher quality already from the first uh, formation phase, because a lot of this work takes much less resources. It's much faster than the actual lean startup when you have to start engaging more with the market in physical ways, oftentimes creating MVPs that are, depending on the types of uh, product you're creating, are already kind of quite substantive, or you have to spend a lot of time manually uh, pretending uh, to create those products. And you have to still create a lot of communication to make those products or concepts believable and authentic enough to get authentic enough validation where the customer would actually buy, instead of just getting their opinions or getting their users for free uh, that may not be then very active. So customer needs is that customers pay for products and services for them to get functional or emotional jobs done. So it is, they want a certain experience, they want to have a certain feeling of comfort, they want to have, you know, the, the, the song that they heard to, to, to listen again, they want to go from A to B uh, and so forth. Custom customers also use metrics. They don't use them in the way we use in the business that we actually collect data and we do this. They, they use it uh, without thinking and they have always opinions about something, where the friction is or what works, what doesn't work, why they want to use something, why they don't want to use, why do they prefer product A instead of product B. So they have these metrics. So when going into customer interview mode without going into a uh, customer validation mode with an MVP to say, here's a product, test this, or here's a product and it costs this way and try that. Uh, but if you go and ask about, there is an interview method also, how to get more valuable input when going uh, with this approach of jobs to be done and thinking that that uh, customers are trying to solve a, a need. They have a task to complete instead of using a product and then measuring what is the, the challenges and problems with that task. 
So those are the types of data to, to, to collect in an interview format that is, is uh, useful instead of saying like, if there would be a product like this, would you use it? Would you pay 20 euros for that? So those are not really identifying needs, but it's, it is what they, how they are solving and what tools they are using now, converting that as a beginning and the end process, and then measuring the pain points in the different uh, dimensions, how reliable it is, how effective you can do this, what other pains are your experiences, why are you using this product instead of that product, and, and then uh, continuing from there. So what are the customers really trying to accomplish? What are they trying to uh, achieve? And very rarely does any product or service get the whole job done, and again, the taxi versus Uber. Uber does it many times better as a more holistic experience, but it's not the end game. Uh, how could a product get more of the job done? So that it does that, but in addition, it does something else. So that's an additional benefit, whether user use it or not, but they could see that they can get more value with the same money. Perhaps they use it, perhaps they don't, but it's, it's, it's more. Or it's extending their job that they used to get that they thought that, like, if, if pre before Uber, consumers couldn't think their experience in that way. Uh, but now when there's Uber, they can. And now they can compare that experience with Uber's competition trying to accomplish uh, the same complete experience. But perhaps there's even more uh, of the jobs that can be done. Maybe there are situations where uh, it would be possible to predict that you're going to need a taxi before you actually need it, like in the airport, uh, so that more of that could be already covered uh, with a service that, that is targeting to all the traveling people and making sure that they never even need to think about Uber uh, when they arrive. They just take it automatically and it's waiting them there because it's tracking the, the, the data about when the flight is arriving and, and knowing the data, how much it average takes from getting from terminal to the car and only ordering the Uber uh, automatically for you, uh, knowing that you are, you are about to come out from there. So getting it done significantly better uh, and people want to get the whole job done on a single platform if possible. So the more it can be done with less tools, the better. And that's an opportunity to develop a platform that first does certain things better than the existing status quo, and, and then it adds layers over time and grows. And people are also willing to pay more, or they are willing to use the service more, and therefore creating more revenue um, if the service is better, cheaper, faster, and so forth. So the world, when we think about the, the, the products, like people, why do they need a drill? That's not that they want a drill. I don't think many people actually want the drill just to drill holes. One could say they need a, they need a hole in the wall, but it goes beyond. They, why do they need the hole in the wall? Then they have a need to put the watch there, they need to decorate, and now we can look from these eyes, okay, I, the job to be done is that I need to hang a lot of paintings to my wall. Now the answer could be that there isn't a drill involved at all. It could be a better product to hang the products to the wall. So this is the, the lens of how to imagine the markets, the potential markets, how to measure the size of the markets, how many has that kind of job to be done and then designing a better product uh, for that. So identifying a market to the lens of what jobs are there to be done, what are the needs involved, how are those jobs to be done at the moment, so the needs are the pain points within that, and then what kind of ideas can we come up with as a solution uh, for those needs, and then how can we deliver that in a scalable way, in an interesting way, using the technologies and solutions of today. These are all desk exercises to come up effectively with your co-founding team, 
with commitment, spending, I don't know, one week effectively, spending four full days just on these topics, doing research effectively that I guarantee you, you will have a better uh, starting point to start building your MVP than jumping from your idea and directly to start validating with the product or uh, MVP uh, representing a product to be built. So, creating ideas for growth, product strategy is then the delivery method. So, you can take low cost distribution, breakdown of radical sustaining product improvement. How do you do that? Uh, so, opportunities dictate strategy. So, once you have the opportunity, once you know the needs, then you can figure out what is the market entry strategy. And you want to do the, the validation phase in between before you start to believe that there is actually a market. It's still a theory, but you want to go there with the best potential, market potential uh, concept to validate. And if validation for that fails, then go for the next one. Uh, but you can only keep repeating this if you have committed team that is committed on success, that is committed on the mission to actually remove that pain from the market, regardless of the idea or the solution that we are going to do that. And that's why vision is important. That's why identifying the market and the pain and the need is important before jumping into ideas. And that's why this kind of just doing idea first and then going to the market validation and seeking a product market fit from the perspective of product first, market second, um, is, is not necessarily the, the best approach. So, idea types, you have uh, creativity triggers, you can do the platform, you can do the business model, you can do features, you can do the go-to-market strategy uh, driver. So, you may want to start with a certain customer segment, sub-segment, um, and you can do uh, ideas in sequence. So, so you can you can first identify a bigger opportunity, but you can then scale it down and see what is the idea within the idea, what is the minimum version, the, the core of the onion, where then you can grow um, out of that. And the criteria is really the outcomes. So, so what are the outcomes of this? So are we successfully delivering value? So are we creating a better experience for the customers where they get the job done better, faster, cheaper, and we can prove that. We, the measures show we do that, and now you have all the information you need to get to become very attractive for external parties and investors to join. Because it's all about how did you arrive to that idea? How did you validate that? What are the numbers saying that make everyone excited when you have big enough vision? It's not about, I have this idea, this is who we are, this is what we have done so far in context of MVP testing and finding the markets. There's more things to that. And you should, of course, balance all of this with cost efforts and risks involved, specifically for the sequencing of how you enter the market and so forth. But this goes into your milestones planning, this goes into your uh, strategies, core strategies, how you navigate that unknown parts. So all of, all of this segment of the, the, the how to drive, how to come up with ideas uh, the right way, here's more links. We have links also later on the, on the face to referencing others. But I wanted to highlight this separately because this brings uh, and resonates very well with the, the thought process where we work and put so much effort on the mission, vision uh, components that are already more traditionally known, but the product and innovation context is kind of lost in between. And uh, the ideation part is not really properly covered um, uh, that in, in the level of what, how much knowledge there is available. 